This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. Negotiations between Hydro Tasmania and the owners of the Tasmanian gas pipeline are said to be failing, prompting concerns that major industrial organisations will be hit with a 95% price increase. TGP is accusing Hydro of compromising on the state's energy security and creating industrial uncertainty within Tasmania. Concerns today, major industrial gas users like Bell Bay Aluminium could be facing a 95% increase in gas prices. Negotiations have been underway to secure an import deal for months, but they're proving unsuccessful. Whether, whether it's a negotiated deal or an arbitrated deal, it needs, to be, it needs to be done by the end of this year. The, the best outcome for energy security, the best outcome for jobs and the best outcome for competitive gas transportation pricing is for Hydro Tasmania to enter into a commercial contract with, with TGP on the basis of what we've offered. Both parties agreeing a deal needs to be reached soon, but neither are able to agree to terms for the gas supply contract for the Tamar Valley Power Station, which impacts other gas users too. We've made a compelling commercial offer to Hydro. It would see a reduction in the current cost of running Tamar Valley Power Station in terms of gas transportation, a reduction of 45%. We don't accept that the offer that they've made to us is acceptable for Tasmania. Tasmanian Gas Pipeline says Hydro is attempting to force negotiations that will lead to arbitration, but says that would be expensive, time consuming and create uncertainty for Tasmanian industry and jobs. We're not aiming for that, but that, that remains, as the government has stated, a, a possibility. In a statement late today, a spokesperson for Bell Bay Aluminium said securing the best possible gas transportation arrangements for industry is contingent on all major stakeholders landing an agreed position which meets the what is best for Tasmania as a whole criteria. The government says the suggestion of job losses within the major industrials is completely baseless and that the state's energy security position is the envy of the nation. But Treasurer Peter Gutwin would not be drawn on the negotiations. There is a process that we're working through. Um, I'm not going to comment on those commercial negotiations. Labor says the government has lost control of the situation. Uh, we saw his uh, aborted attempt to sell the Tamar Valley Power Station, uh, which meant that Hydro Tasmania was not negotiating good faith. We know that the, the government's own Energy Security Task Force has said that this should have been resolved by March of this year, and still we've seen uh, the situation drag on. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. My state has revealed its latest assessment of Tasmania's economy. It shows growth in property, tourism and lower unemployment. But exports are in decline. The Treasurer spruiks his economic stimulus scheme. Projects like the transformation of a Kingston toilet block into a surf lifesaving club, suitable for a slice of $60 million worth of interest-free loans. Projects that councils have wanted to, to get involved in to ensure that they improve the amenity, livability uh, of uh, their communities, but at the same time, by bringing them forward, they can drive economic growth as well. My state says government spending has been providing support to the local economy as it released its quarterly economic update. The Tasmanian economy is firing on most of its cylinders. We're certainly leading uh, in many economic indicators nationally and only lagging on a, on a handful. Tasmania's unemployment rate is sitting in the middle of the pack. Our wage growth through to March was the highest in the nation. Property is booming, mortgage applications up more than 22%. That's mostly centred in Hobart, but we're starting to see that to move into the regions. And also Hobart and Tasmania is very attractive in terms of number one attractiveness for investors. Tourism is a significant driving force in our economy. Visitor numbers are up 7% and with it visitor spending, which is now worth $2.23 billion. And my state says this growth is flowing through to regional areas. Tourism is a number one in terms of international inbound tourism. Tasmania leads the rest of the country. Uh, domestic tourism is still very strong, so that's flowing through the economy. But a weak spot is our exports, with slowed growth for aluminium and steel and lower values for agriculture. Nationally, exports are growing, but Tasmania's are declining. 
we've had uh, conversations uh, with uh, producers right around uh, the state that the government really just doesn't listen to them when it comes to freight issues here in Tasmania. Uh, we know that uh, people need confidence about uh, being able to get their produce to market if they are going to invest here in Tasmania. And our population growth is also lagging behind the national average. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A Tasmanian woman accused of murdering Aaron Matthew Monaco of Newnham has appeared briefly in Launceston's Supreme Court. 39-year-old Belinda Leone Colburn fronted Judge Shan Tennant via video link this morning after previously pleading not guilty. Mr Monaco died last November. He was allegedly stabbed multiple times in the torso at his unit. Newnham man Nathan Thomas Smith has also been charged with his murder. Colburn has been remanded in custody and will next appear in court on July 24. Police say it's miraculous. A driver survived a crash with a power pole at Cambridge this morning. The car was severely damaged, but luckily the driver's side escaped the brunt of the impact. Pictures taken by police show a tree branch piercing through the rear passenger seats. TAS Network's crews blocked part of Richmond Road while they replaced the power pole. The damage to the vehicle was extensive. It was very, very badly damaged and fortunately the driver of that vehicle received only a minor injury of a cut to his head. Police haven't determined a cause but are reiterating the need to drive to the conditions. Meanwhile, a northern Tasmanian driver has also had a lucky escape after ploughing his car into bush off the East Tamer Highway near Mowbray. The incident occurred around 2.30 this afternoon. Paramedics treated the driver at the scene. He didn't sustain any major injuries. It's believed a medical condition may have played a role. After four decades living and working in Tasmania, a New Zealand-born man has finally become an Australian citizen. The special moment shared with dozens of others making their own commitment to country. It's one of the longest transitions from Kiwi to Aussie. Jean Lawton arrived in Launceston in 1978, having lived a tough life, adopted from a boy's home after his parents couldn't look after him. Well, I never ever knew my, where I came from. I never knew my parents until about a few years ago. And uh, when I finally found out, I decided to, try to do something about my, my past and um, found out who my dad was and who my mum was. He also tracked down seven siblings he never knew he had. With this closure, the 66-year-old chose to enter a new chapter in life by finally becoming an Australian citizen. Oh, it feels good to be an Aussie because all my mates give me a fucking hard time about it. <laughs> he was one of 47 people naturalised today, all with their own reasons for choosing the Apple Isle. My husband's Australian, my kids are Australian and Swedish, and so, yeah, we just the final step. It's a lifetime, I think, achievement for me to be here. Today's citizens came from 15 different countries. Just a credit to the, the people of our city, how they make them feel warm and welcome, even on a cool day. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. After months of red tape, Tasmania Zoo has welcomed the state's first red panda. While the furry creature called Mandu is still getting used to her new home, she's already attracting attention from interstate visitors. She only arrived in Tasmania yesterday and already 18-month-old Mandu has found her perch high among the treetops. Peering through the leaves, she's also quickly drawing in fans. We think it's wonderful. I think it's the first red panda that I've ever seen. It's been a very long time to get her, so it's very exciting and they're one of the cutest animals around. Tasmania Zoo has wanted to introduce the endangered species for years, but due to opposition from animal welfare group PETA, its bid to import the red panda into the state was only approved in February. Since then, a purpose-built enclosure has been constructed and the Riverside facility has been increasing its bamboo stocks. There's only about 2,500 red pandas left in the wild and Mandu is a Nepalese a red panda and there's only about 300 left of them. So um, she'll be a great ambassador. The zoo is currently finalising paperwork to receive a second red panda. It's hoped that will join Mandu next week. Mandu was bred in captivity and has previously lived at Melbourne Zoo. She will eventually be part of a breeding program to help try and boost red panda numbers. Monika Dadson, Southern Cross News. 
Hobart is hosting an Antarctic conference with a difference. Science normally dominates, but this conference is about the social sciences in relation to Antarctica. 90 delegates from six continents are attending with various specialties like international politics, visual arts we and anthropology. We believe that science is really crucial in understanding Antarctica, but to have a full picture of our relationship with the continent, past, present, future, we need contributions across the full disciplinary spectrum. The conference runs until Friday. Hawthorne's classic brown and gold Guernsey is receiving a big splash of pink. The Hawks will wear this special strip during their clash against Greater Western Sydney at Utah Stadium on Saturday. The design is part of a fundraising drive for the Cancer Council. There'll be pink laces in the boots. There'll be pink stations all around the, uh, the stadium for those that are coming to the game to pink up their hair, pink up their clothing. The game will also feature a performance by tattooed tenor Matthew Garwood, who recently lost his grandfather to cancer. The Guernseys will be auctioned off after the game. A lost Tasmanian sheep who made headlines last month for his heavy fleece has found a new home. Cecil was picked up by the Williams family this afternoon and is tonight settling into their hobby farm at Bridge North. I want him to have a good life and I want him to get used to other animals. But it will take a bit because he's been in the wild and he's not used to us feeding him. Cecil was rescued by the RSPCA after he was found stuck on a ledge in an abandoned quarry. The runaway sheep was then given a makeover, his fleece weighing in at 38 kilos. He'll now be kept far away from any cliffs. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. Despite a late rally, the share market has ended the day lower, with all sectors losing ground except for the big miners. The A6200 index has dropped by 20.5 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.29 US cents and 86.4 Japanese yen. Lauderdale is set to appeal the TSL Tribunal's decision to suspend star player Jordan Roberts for six matches for rough conduct. But the TSL is holding firm, claiming a stance needs to be taken in order to stamp dangerous tackles out of the game. No matter which angle you look at it from, the evidence is damning and the TSL has made its position clear. The key message from last night's uh, two cases is a really strong message to players and uh, coaches about the way they're going to tackle. Um, clearly as a game and as a competition we have a duty of care to protect all 36 players that take the field. Following Jordan Roberts' tackle on Launceston's Stuart Williams during Saturday's clash at Windsor Park, the incident was referred directly to the tribunal. Last night they found Roberts guilty of rough conduct and suspended him for six matches. It's another ugly incident for the sport in recent times. Roberts' teammate Scott Hill was also found guilty of rough conduct for this tackle on Sam Lonigan and suspended for three matches. While Melbourne demon Tom Bug cops six weeks for striking at last night's AFL tribunal. The TSL wants players to think long and hard about the consequences of actions like these moving forward. We want uh, kids and families to not only come along and support footy but play footy and I think it's really important that people feel safe uh, in our sport and when they play our game at whatever level that is they, they feel protected. Robert's suspension wouldn't see him return for the Bombers until round 20, the last of the season, which could potentially hinder the side's hopes of a top three finish. Lauderdale has lodged an official appeal on the suspension which will be heard on Monday night. Chargers import Michaela Roof says she's finally starting to gel with the squad after their first win in five games since she arrived into the fray. The Tasmanian teams head away for some tough matchups this weekend with the Torns welcoming back captain Lauren Mansfield. Finally opening up about what caused this boil over during the side's loss to Aubrey Wodonga two weeks ago. We really did struggle with our shooting percentage in the first two games that I played in and I think part of that was girls not looking at the basket when they when they have um, open shots so maybe that was a little bit of frustration yeah. <laughs> the Chargers now in better spirits after the weekend's five point win over a quality opposition in Geelong. It sees them still right in the playoff hunt. I think yeah our team started to gel a lot better. I'm getting used to each other. I'm finding my role on the team so hopefully we can keep that going this weekend. She knows how we play kind of now and we know what she likes to do and 
we're getting used to each other. So yeah, it just takes a bit of time. Still holding on to top spot on the conference ladder after their five point win over the Super Cats, the men's side will look to redeem themselves on the road this weekend. For some reason in this conference, it's, it's, we're two different teams when we're at home and on the road. It's pretty unfortunate, but yeah, we know we're going to have to play well, so we've talked about it and we're aware of it, yeah. Both Chargers sides taking on Dandenong Friday night before travelling to Melbourne to take on the Tigers. While the Tornadoes will be bolstered by the return of Captain Lauren Mansfield, who's back from Opal's duties for their away match against East Conference ladder leaders Kilsyth. The Torns are desperate to stay in touch with the top end of the South Conference ladder after dropping two of their last three games. I think we're really on the cusp of, of doing something special coming into the playoffs um, and, and we've got all the signs of that moving forward. The Northwest Thunder play Albury Wodonga on Friday night before travelling to Kilsyth the following day to take on the Cobras. Well, Tasmania's sole representative at the International School Netball Tournament has completed its final training session. The team from Newstead College will be among 80 schools at the Gold Coast Netball Carnival, with some coming from New Zealand and South Africa. Players have spent more than six months preparing for the competition. We decided that we wanted to challenge ourselves and go towards something different, so we went towards the Gold Coast. The team heads off on Friday. And a big news for Tasmanian golf with the North West Coast, Ryan McCarthy qualifying for the prestigious British Open. McCarthy was the only Australian to qualify overnight, earning the right by finishing third at a pre-tournament in Scotland. Currently ranked number 1,342 in the world, the British Open will be the 27-year-old's first start at a major. McCarthy won the 2009 Tasmanian Open before turning professional in 2012. He'll join the the likes of Aaron Badley, Adam Scott and Jason Day at the Open, which starts on July 20. Good evening, Hobart and Burnley 13, Launceston and Devonport 14 today. You might have felt cool, but temperatures around average. Campania and Friendly Beach is the top, 15 degrees. Ooze the low with minus two. A few showers over the west and north. Mount Reed the highest fall with nine millimetres to three o'clock. Grove and Fingal 14 degrees. Lowhead, Wynyard, Bushy Park, Strawn and the Islands all on 13. Lyawini a top of six. Mid to low level cloud is over our region along with Victoria and South Australia. A band is moving there just south of WA. Mid level cloud is over southern Queensland and northern New South Wales and if you squint and come really close to the screen you may see the wispy cloud over the Northern Territory. Cloudy today over the west and through Bass Strait while more increased over central areas this afternoon. Tomorrow a bit of everything with high pressure zones over the east and through central Australia, a developing low with associated troughs and a cold front moved through the bite. Winds west to south westerly 15 to 25 knots but up to 20 to 30 knots over the north and south. Lighter inland, swells at three metres in western and southern waters. Strong wind warning from Stanley to St Helens Point and from Wineglass Bay south to South East Cape. Hobart, an early shower tomorrow, 13 the maximum, 12 the high for Signet, partly cloudy for New Norfolk, 12. For Launceston, a morning frost, a cloudy afternoon, 14 the top, 13 for Devonport, cloudy 2 for Campbelltown and a top of 11 degrees. For Burnie, partly cloudy and 13, showery for Strawn and Smithton, both on 12 degrees. St Helens tomorrow, sunny and 15, 14 for Swansea, OK 2 for Fingal after a cold start, 13 the maximum. On Friday, morning frost with showers over the west and Bass Strait, extending to the north in the afternoon, but fine elsewhere. Another frost on Saturday, showers extending statewide by early evening, some snow on the peaks and a showery 13 for the Hawks GWS game. And on Sunday, showers mostly clearing, apart from the west. Showers increasing in Perth tomorrow, a shower as well for Adelaide and Melbourne, a sunny day for Sydney and Darwin, and a morning shower for Brisbane. Cloudy in Hobart, 11 degrees, 8 degrees in Launceston and 9 in Devonport. Jo, that's where we leave it. OK, thanks so much for that, Murph. And that's all from the team for now. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.